So we'll go through a sound check. And uh, if you can give me an audio check on Facebook and or um, YouTube, that would be really great. So we're streaming both live to Facebook and YouTube and on uh, Twitter, actually. But I don't know that anyone ever watches over there on Twitter. But if, uh, if you're joining right now and you can hear me on any one of those platforms, and if you could let me know, I would really appreciate that. All right, so we're starting a new project. You might see the project down there in uh, the bottom corner of the screen. And I'm going to be drawing. This is the monthly challenge inside Monthly Sharpener. So I'm going to be drawing this on Stonehenge. So, so this is Stonehenge uh, Warm White from a pad. Let me show you what that looks like. This is the the pad that I'm using is called warm white. Now that might be showing up a little more gold than what it actually looks like. Uh, the cover that is. So here's the paper, what it looks like. It's, you know, it's uh, nearly like an ivory kind of color. So well, I haven't heard from anybody. So I want to make sure that I am streaming and not talking to myself. Okay. Make sure we're actually streaming here. Okay. Looks like we are. Good deal. All right. There we go. <clears throat> Hopefully it's public. So if you guys can hear me, let me know. And if you're over there on YouTube or you're on Facebook and you can actually uh, see the stream, I would appreciate if you just let me know that you can hear me. Hey, Jan. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, I did have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, like I was saying, this is on warm white Stonehenge paper. And I think what I'm going to do is probably use... Uh, oh, awesome. Thanks, Jan. So I'm probably going to start out here with a very dark color in polychromos. So maybe polychromos. Let me take a look here. Hey, Melanie. And Deborah is out here as well. Awesome. Thanks for joining, guys. Okay. I think what I'll do this time is use Burnt Sienna in Polychromos. So I haven't done that in a long time. Such a good color, though. Uh, just a, a hint of uh, red. We're on the red side of things, but it's a light, very nice, rich brown. So, so I got two pencils sharpened up, ready to go. And I'm going to primarily focus on the nose since that's what I've been focusing on lately. And that's uh, one of the things that I talked about over there inside the challenge in Member Circle is challenging yourself with the nose, drawing noses. 
Um, but you know, this face actually, the way that we've got it cropped, you can focus on anything that you'd like to. You can focus on the eyes if you'd rather, or if you'd rather do the entire portrait, you can always do that as well. Okay. So I've got my outline on here uh, to start out with, and I use the uh, Caran d'Ache Sketcher pencil to trace that outline. I used um, essentially um, the equivalent of a light box to get that on here, just to get something on the paper and to get going rather than spend time uh, working on my uh, freehand drawing. All right. Get that shadow shape in here. I want to be able to depict where the side of that nose is. And right over here, I want to indicate where that nostril starts to come back. That shadow starts to come back towards the middle of the nose, right there where the septum is. This uh, outer corner over here, especially with um, this tilt in the, the overall head, has a little bit of an angle uh, and with this particular nose, there's an angle on both sides. And, and then it moves inward back towards that septum. The septum actually uh, is a little bit lower, or I like to think of it as just a little bit lower. It's not always lower, but if you think of it like that, then... Often you'll get those nostrils, the underside of the nostrils at the root of the nose uh, placed a little bit and uh, a little more accurately if you're thinking of it in that way. At least for me, that works. All right. I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of this. It's a little bit, little bit darker. Uh, this little spot on top right here. I want that to be nearly a straight diagonal line right here. Okay. I've got a small separation here in uh, the top of the lips and... Small indication here of where the philtrum is, and as it moves its way down towards the lips. Got this shadow shape over here now for the cast shadow of the nose. And then up here, we're going all the way up to where the eyebrow is. So this, this particular shadow turns a little bit. The darkest area is going to be right there in the middle of this shadow. Sort of down the ridge of the nose right here on this outer edge because that area is more recessed than anything else. As this plane starts to move back towards the face, um, it's lighter up here 
than it is down here in this darkest area. So we could call this a terminator line, but it's not as dark up here at this terminator line as it is down here, right here at this most recessed area. Um, so if you're drawing this, especially for the March challenge, if you're working on this, one way to verify that is uh, that this is the darkest area, is just go in there into paint.net or Photoshop or something like that, and in your photo editor, posterize what you're looking at. Change it to anywhere between four, six, or seven uh, levels. And you're going to see that there's a darker area right there next to where the cheek and the side plane of the nose um, start to shift. That plane starts to shift right in there. So I hope that makes sense. And that tells you then that, aha, that area must be more recessed than any other area. All right. I want this edge over here at the side of the nose to be very dark. This is one of my darkest areas. Um, so it's a dark value within within a uh, shadow. So uh, let's see, Deborah says, sorry, I missed what you said in the beginning. Are you copying from a light box in place of tracing it first? Yeah, so if I can grab it. This is what I used to create my line drawing. Uh, let me see if I have the, I don't have the brand name, but uh, it's essentially like a light box. So instead of freehanding this one, since it is the 15th of the month, um, I wanted to get this one started right away. So I did a line drawing from that light box. And now uh, we're going to shade this in, trying to um, show what my approach would be with uh, drawing this monthly challenge for the month of March. Let me move my camera over just a little bit. There we go. Was that what you were asking, Deborah? I think. Hope. <laughs> okay. Now this this shadow kind of moves out away from the nose a little bit and over this way and then back a little bit towards the nostril again. There we go. Awesome. There we go, Deborah. Yeah. So it uh, it speeds up the process. And it gets you closer to um, closer to the the part where you're going to be doing all of your uh, shading and your uh, yeah, and all of your rendering. So now it's uh, it's often something that you know. Um, those that are starting out um, in uh, in drawing or in art in general or in colored pencil, uh, and they don't know that there are a lot of artists that will use a light box to get a line drawing, um, sometimes get a little confused by that and think, oh, that must be 
somehow cheating or something like that, or that must be, you know, something that um, helps you to learn how to freehand draw. And neither of those things are true. Um, it doesn't really help you to learn how to freehand draw. Uh, that's a separate skill. And freehand drawing um, actually takes place typically in your sketchbook when you're, when you're drawing or when you're just practicing freehand drawing. When you're just drawing for fun and you're working on that skill of freehand drawing. Um, when you're wanting to do a rendering uh, of something different, like in colored pencil, like I'm doing now, then I'm not saying you can't use colored pencil when you're in your sketchbook. Obviously you can. But when I'm working right now in uh, working on all of my my layering process, my colored pencil skills, and all those things, then um, it speeds up the process by tracing that outline. You still have to, I mean, you could have a complete outline before you started, and you could still run into a lot of problems because... Your outline doesn't, it's not a static thing that just stays in one spot. Uh, it changes as you, as you work on it. Because your shading shifts that line back and forth. And so you're doing yourself, so you're doing yourself a lot of favors by practicing freehanding, uh, at other times, you know, you could do it on the same project. And I often start that way. Um, but, but there's nothing wrong with tracing your outline and getting started right away. Let's uh, see, Jan at uh, fine art cafe. I feel like I need to say your name each time, Jan, <laughs> that I, that I identify you as fine art cafe. Uh, her name is Jan. And she says, this is what I use to get my outline. And then uh, use it uh, to work on. Yep. All right. Jan, that dog you just did looks fantastic. That is just so nice. Love that. There's so, so many uh, works that I've seen recently from from so many of you guys over there in Monthly Sharpener. It's just incredible. All right, let's see here. Now, we are on Stonehenge paper, and so... Sometimes some of the application on some of these I'm going to switch pencils on some of the early uh, layering is going to look uneven a little bit. I don't want to be uh, just creating an uneven application, but sometimes it just happens that way, and and that's okay. As long as it is uh, something that hasn't been, you know, just uh, pressed into the paper really hard. So let me zoom in just a little bit here so you can see this better. But um, there are some things that I will get rid of. I will try to correct if I if I see a problem with it um, like I could get real nitpicky with some of this and I could say okay under the nose here you know there's a couple of areas that are getting um, too much pigment on them right in there right in here maybe over here things like that um, although it doesn't bother me a whole lot the way some of that looks right now so I'm just trying to demonstrate what, 
what I would do if it did bother me. Um, and then come back in here and try to get a more smooth application of the pencil. Get it to lay down a little more evenly than what it did initially. And looks like it did, so that's good. I'm using a very, very light, light touch on the paper, but it absorbs the pencil so quickly right now, especially because there's nothing else on the paper. So it's uh, taken, it's taken the uh, pencil very, very quickly. All right, so this outside edge over here of that shadow, I want to be very diffused. And I am going to add a little bit of pencil strokes over there, but I also want those strokes to be very light. I'm going to go very, very dark with uh, my application. That's what I've got in my mind right now, that I want to go very dark uh, in the shadow. So I want it to be flexible enough early on uh, to allow me to use a very dark application of pencil layers. And if I remember that early on, then... Uh, that will help me in knowing just how dark I can get this. No, it's going to be much darker than what I have right now. Now, it looks very dark only because it's the only thing on the paper. So it's going to look much darker than what it really is in reality. All right, I need to sharpen this. I'm going to hit my sandpaper just a little bit, my sandpaper block. Get a little bit of a point on it and keep going here. There we go. Now I want to get some additional strokes. Down here in this cast shadow from a different angle so that I can have the diffused edge that I want. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side. I'm just dragging my pencil from the outer edge and the white of the paper into the shadow. Very, very light touch so that I can get Get that feathered edge or that diffused kind of edge over there. There we go. I'm going one direction right now. I'm not scrubbing the paper. I'm going in one direction. Now, early on, you know, I often want to do that so that I can protect the tooth of the paper as long as possible. Especially with Stonehenge paper. I mean, it's such a delicate tooth. A very, very nice, nice surface to work on. Uh, but if I, if I don't think about the delicate tooth that's on the surface and I just start pushing this very, very hard, uh, then I can damage that surface. And some people refer to that as, as burnishing. Pressing hard does mean burnishing, um, or burnishing does mean pressing hard, I guess I should say. But what happens is then, you know, I can't put subsequent layers down as easily if I press too hard in the beginning. A lot of misconceptions regarding burnishing with colored pencil. Um, you know, there's there's some that will say, oh, burnishing is when you use solvent on colored pencil. Well, I, I disagree with that. Um, some will say, well, 
burnishing is when you have completely filled all the tooth of the paper. Uh, that does happen when you burnish, but that's not burnishing. And, you know, others will say that um, you should burnish with each layer. And that may be a technique that some use. You don't have to do it that way. Um, but burnishing, the root of the word, the, where we get it from is to polish wood or something else, polishing furniture and things like that. And so polishing, if we're talking about that, that just means to make something shiny. And they did that by rubbing and removing a, uh, you know, rubbing it so much so that they removed any of the imperfections or uh, wore something down so that it created a smooth surface. And in art, whenever we're burnishing, doing is we are pressing so hard that we're removing uh, the tooth of the paper that we're on. When we're talking about drawing. And so if we press really hard and remove the tooth, uh, sometimes that's what we want. That's what we want to do. Um, but early on in a drawing process on a surface like this, like Stonehenge, where we can have nearly countless layers of pencil, then that's not what I want to do. I want to protect and preserve the tooth for as long as possible. Because it gives me more options. It gives me more flexibility when I do that. All right, I want to pay attention to where that shape is, right there inside that entire shadow. Okay. I'm going to remove some of this only because that helps create that diffused look, that very soft edge to the shadow. Which that's what I'm after in this drawing. Okay. Zoom back out just a little bit here. Hey, good morning, Nancy. Nancy is over on YouTube live watching. Thanks for joining us, Nancy. If you guys would like to follow along with the live stream and draw this uh, yourself, you're welcome to do that. Uh, the complete full res reference is available over there in uh, Monthly Sharpener inside Member Circle. Uh, if you're not a member over there, you can get the, the low res uh, version of it over at sharpenedartist.com slash live streams. And that's available, and it's a cropped version, but you can still draw from it. Uh, and you're welcome to do that. Uh, this is a royalty free reference that I, I took myself. So, and that's over there on the website, like I just mentioned. Or under the menu, I think resources and then live streams also, if you want to look it up that way. Don't forget to hit the like button. 
Oh, don't forget. Uh, it helps the channel a lot. Thanks, Nancy. Nancy is Nancy is always looking out for me there. <laughs> Sharpen my pencils here. Appreciate that. Yeah, that does uh that does help me quite a bit. I really appreciate that. Hitting that like button does help a lot. It's a it's a good signal to uh to YouTube uh and Facebook if you're over there. That, uh, but especially YouTube, uh, to let others know that this is something worth watching. So I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go a little bit darker here. Now, I do know some artists who, um, you know, we were talking about burnishing a moment ago, and I know some artists who, um, press really hard right from the beginning on Stonehenge, and it works out very, very well for them. Cecile Baird is one who presses pretty hard pretty early on. Um, and uh, my goodness, just uh, creates some fabulous work. So that's, uh, that's her technique. That's what she does, and it works really well. All right, and she probably doesn't move her pencil in uh, one direction either. I, I can't remember. <laughs> so, Deborah, so you got a you got a runaway half mat sharpener that's not stopping whenever it should. Oh no. That's no good. Um, yeah, might I don't. I'm not sure how long you've had it. Maybe, maybe it's time to to switch it. I don't know. Depends on the pencils, though, right? Or it does for me anyway. Sometimes I don't trust them to stop on their own. I just kind of know, you know, when I think it's going to be sharp and then I'll pull it out. Sometimes I'm wrong and I'll have to stick it back in, but I know what you're talking about. It's very depressing to take your pencil out and see that it's <laughs> got eaten up that much <laughs> and you're hoping it would stop. I think I'm probably going to have to stick with this drawing for a while and draw those eyes because I, I like what I see there and I think I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> Deborah, those should come with a bulk of pencils. Yeah. It's yeah, it's not fun looking at how much of your pencil ended up in the sharpener. Ah, it's it's awful. Okay, I want to hunker down and lean over this and. Uh, look at it closer, but if I did that, all you guys would see is the top of my head in the stream, and nobody wants to see that. So I'm looking at it from this weird angle, really. Um, that's okay. I'm, I'm just trying to trying to see that angle a little bit, get that drawn the right way. As long as you keep looking at it from a weird angle. You know, you're okay. Um, I do, uh, you know, after the live stream is over, I do look at it from up above. So, hey, Oksana is joining us also over there in, on YouTube Live. Oh, let's see here. 
Now that's what I love right there. It's hard to see on camera, but um, when you get to that spot right here, right there, where the layer of pencil has a just a very nice even application, even enough to where you can go on top of it with itself, and it just turns out really, uh, really nice. There's just this good feeling, even that you're feeling from the from the tip of your pencil as you're applying the pencil to the to that surface, because because you're not drawing on the paper, you're drawing on uh, a level or layer there that you put down. There's something nice about that. Well, thank you, Oksana. Appreciate it. Okay, so let me think about this. Although everything out here, I want to go all the way over because I've got that shadow that grad it, it starts gradually over here down down the bridge of the nose and then it starts to turn Turn my pencil just a little bit. Gives me just a little more of a little, little bit more of a point on the tip. I found another little edge when I do that. That shape that uh, saves me from uh, sharpening in between just a little. Okay, this shadow shape right here is right there in the middle, so much darker and just about everywhere else. I don't know that for sure, but it it seems like it probably is. I mean, so I'm, I'm talking about even down here that this might be darker up here. It logically could be darker right in here, though. Um, but you know, you could check that easily. Whoops. I'm off the frame a little bit. Um, you could check that pretty easily just by grabbing the reference and posterizing it and looking at it and see them, you know, see what you think, see if it's darker up there. Might be the same value as down here. You could get away with it being the same value. There'd be nothing wrong with that at all. You could even get away with it being slightly lighter than down here. Okay. Let me move this shadow over just a little bit more. Right here in this uh, keystone area, right between um, the eyes up above where the eyebrows are, right there, just in the middle here, just below uh, where that brow ridge is. And that's a very, very soft gradation in shadow that starts to begin right there. I don't want to go too fast. Sometimes I start to do that and I have to slow myself down. So I'm talking about the uh, speed at which I rake the pencil over the surface of the paper. Like we talked about earlier, I want to make sure that I'm protecting the tooth of the paper. If I start going too fast, then I'm not going to protect that tooth. 
move back down in here. Okay, and then I'll have an uneven application, and I've got a little bit of an uneven application right now that I want to take care of. So how do you do that? Um, one of the ways I do it is by using the kneaded eraser and just tapping on it just a little bit to remove some of this. It's out here a little bit uh, farther. So I didn't remove it completely, and I leave the pigment that is collecting on the surface of the kneaded eraser, leave it there, so that I'm just staining the surface, or essentially removing some of those uneven marks, and what it, re, re, uh, what it leaves is sort of a stained surface, or... It's tinted just a little bit. I can go back over it now and redraw some of those areas. So I'm just going to leave my eraser like that, lay it down over here on my table so I can come back to it. And I still have uh, a little bit of that pigment on there. So it's not going to remove a lot because that's not my point. My point is to just soften some of the areas. Give me more of a vignette, right? I'm still using a very light touch on this right now. So if I need for the pencil layer to be a little darker, then instead of bearing down and pressing hard right now, what I want to do is hit it from a slightly different angle and turn my pencil a little bit as well and that will help the pencil to adhere to the surface okay let me use my sticky putty i'm just going to remove a little tiny bit of some areas that are getting a little bit too dark. I'll look around for some of those. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Well. That didn't work too well. I was uh, I went in there and subconsciously I matched the value that I had down there, and I don't want to do that. There we go. All right. Yeah, so this area down here next to or on the cheek, I guess you could call it, um, can be darker than this whole shadow up here on the nose. So I can come back down here and add a little more pigment. Just to darken that up just a little bit more. I'll zoom out and let me see if I can see this 
looks a little bit different on the screen. So that's a good thing to do is to look at it over there on the screen. Okay. Now at this point, I kind of need to look at where, you know, what it's doing and what it may be looking like. I do want that to be darker over here on this edge. But, you know, that sometimes that's an illusion. So I want to make sure that, um, you know, that it's looking accurate. Got an edge over here as well that is a little bit too dark at the moment. So for a little bit of context over here, I can add a little bit of value right in here where, where I see that on the cheek right there next to the nose. There we go. come back in this direction just to add a little more of a tint in that area right there. Okay. So who all is doing the March challenge? If you guys are doing the March challenge, I would love to know about it. I know some of you are already. You've told me, but if anyone is out here today and is working on it, um, let me know. That's exciting. Okay, we move away from that area. It's a very delicate area over here on the cheek. It's fun when it uh, starts to look right, you know, but it's it's very delicate and hard to get it there. Ah, very cool, Melanie. Awesome. Good to hear. So, Jan, uh, you're asking, is it okay if we do another person for the challenge? Uh, I mean, you can you can draw whatever you want, right? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Um, yeah, so the challenge is, is this particular 
uh, reference. So, but yeah, I'd love to see whatever it is you're doing. That's awesome. So Oksana, it's on my list. Things to do. Nose scares me to draw sometimes. I understand that. Totally understand that, Oksana. Uh oh. Nancy's got a broken finger. That does not sound good, especially for an artist. Oh my word. I am so sorry to hear that. That's awful. Okay, yeah, this is uh, just a very subtle area and you know, I don't want to make a bigger deal of this than I need to. And I sure don't want that looking like dirt on the face. Uh, one thing that can do that quick is brown. So I know I know that uh, that's something that I used to, um, you know, try to try to do early on is use brown and... Uh, uh, and brown is just not the way you want to go typically with shadows or dark values. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but it can start to make a face uh, or any anything you're drawing just look like, you know, for lack of a better way of putting it, just dirt on the face. So... Ah, there we go. Oksana. Oksana says she's um, thinking about using the whole buying pencils on her on her challenge. That'd be cool. That'd be very interesting. Would love to hear your thoughts on that because uh, I've not used those, and I want to hear what what you guys think about them after you use them. Okay. So Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, what paper are you going to use, um, Oksana? Do you know yet? I think that's what Deborah was asking. It would be, it'd be good to know. I would love to know what you think about them. Ah, yeah. That's, uh, that's what I've noticed, that... That palette that they have, all those pastel tones, that would be really nice for skin. This cast shadow over here for the nose also morphs its way, it morphs its way into the form shadow of the top of the uh, mouth here. That top lip. So it's an interesting, interesting thing that happens here. And just want to make sure that that I have a clear separation, though, at least early on, in where uh, that shadow starts to take on uh, a different uh, shape and form. Um, I mean, it can all run together, right? But early in this process, I kind of want to know what's what, and I don't want it to run together completely, at least not yet. You can do that later on, but I kind of want to know where everything is. Uh, 
So it starts to get a little bit darker down here by the mouth. There we go. There we go. Oh, hey, Shiny. Shiny is over on YouTube Live as well. Thanks for joining us. How are you? Okay. Shiny, isn't it like uh, 3 in the morning or something for you? I can't remember. It always seems like it's very early in the morning for you around this time. I might be getting my time mixed up, though. Okay. Well, I wouldn't say I got a, I got a portrait done today, but I got a good start on one, I think. Deborah, um, if you're talking about this portrait, I got a good start, I think. Now I'm going to remove a little bit of this darker area right here on this nostril. Oh, thanks, Oksana. So I'm going to resume that self-portrait today again, um, do a live stream with it again today. So I'm removing some of that dark value right there because uh, I'm going to put more of a red color in there. So I kind of know where it is now, and that, that was my point right there. Um, but I want to reserve that a little bit so that I can use uh, some warmer tones uh, right in there and make sure that I get something that um would be more logical in uh in a bright area okay let's see here move that down and we still have some of this shadow that uh, needs a little bit of work, but you know, it's uh, it's okay for the moment. Okay. 
I'm going to put a few darker lines up here just to get some context of uh, where things are. Up here. All right, so next time we will probably work more on the uh, eyes. Um, we may work a little bit more on the nose as well, but at least we'll have something to, to work on in different stages, which I think is always uh, something fun to do. It makes it a little more interesting, I feel like, if we can do that, uh, especially for... A live stream and we're not just working on one thing looks like that needs to go up just a little bit but I'll worry about that later I guess put a little bit of shading in here so we can see the the context here for what we're doing. Most of our dark shading is going to be over here on the outer edge of the this eye. So all right, that should be enough get us started there okay yeah i think uh we'll go ahead and, and stop for today thanks for joining guys it's been a lot of fun and i uh, can't wait to see uh what you're doing with this march challenge so we'll talk to you soon have a great day Bye bye